Hello, and welcome to another free pattern. This past winter, Northern Hemisphere summer, I jumped on the shawl train. It started with just a little shawlette, and then it morphed into a full shawl, and then I decided to write my own since all I wanted was just a basic squishy shawl. Enter the Haunting Hollow Shawl. The Haunting Hollow Shawl pattern is written as a mid-size shawl, but it's very easy to make it bigger by just increasing the stockinette section. However, this might throw off your knot stitch section, so I wouldn't adjust it unless you're super confident about rejigging that section. It would probably be easier to just use a heavier weight yarn to get a bigger shawl. Speaking of adjustments and tips and tricks for knitting shawls, rather than a video of watching me knit miles and miles of stockinette, to go with this project, I wanted to share some tips and tricks for knitting that I've learned over the years. So while they are specific to this shawl, you can absolutely apply them to many other things, and most of them I learned from other projects and just applied to this shawl. So let's jump on in. The garter tab trick. This one I found via Pinterest and tested when I was drafting this pattern. So the original article is from the My Sister Knits blog, and the link can be found in the description. When casting on your stitches for the garter tab, place locking stitch markers through each of your cast on stitches. You then knit the number of rows you need in your tab, turn, pick up the side stitches as normal, grabbing the little knobs that poke up, and when you come back around to your cast on edge, all you need to do is pull on your stitch marker and it will show you the original cast on stitches that you have to pick up and knit. It's a great way to make picking up those last few stitches a little bit easier. The make one left trick. So this one's very helpful with any project that makes you do make one left. Sometimes I find it a bit hard to get into the back of my stitch when doing a make one left. What you can do is instead of trying to maneuver into the back, you can go into the front of your stitch with your right hand needle and then shuffle it round to the back and then continue knitting into the back of the stitch as normal. Make one right trick. So similarly, depending on my tension, it can be hard to pick up the bar from the back sometimes when doing a make one right. I just find it sometimes sinks right against my work and I just can't get it with that needle. So in those cases, I'll actually use my right hand needle to pick up the bar in order to help maneuver my left needle under and to the front. You just have to be very careful that you are picking it up in the correct direction to get your needle from the back to the front. Yarn over trick. This works for any shawl that has you do a yarn over every other row. So for example, on the Haunted Hollow shawl, you do knit three stitches and then yarn over at the beginning of every right side row. So if you forget how many rows you've done, you can count the yarn over holes from your garter tab and each one counts for two rows, the right side and the wrong side, which saves you time having to go in and try and count each row on each of these stitches. Excessive use of stitch markers. Or, you know, just use of stitch markers. I feel like I probably use them excessively. This is applicable to any lace shawl or wherever you have lots of repeats or anything that you need to keep track of. Stitch markers. I am a big fan of having a gazillion of them. Place them wherever your lace pattern repeats to keep your pattern neatly in place. It also helps to easily catch and spot mistakes that you might make. For example, on the changes shawlette I knit, I used 25 of them to indicate each point of the zigzag pattern. Lifelines. Similarly, if you're about to start a new, maybe a more complicated section, set up a lifeline for yourself in case you need to rip back your work, which is never something that you want to think of, but it can be incredibly helpful if you do need to. To do this, stop before you start the section and thread a scrap of yarn or a piece of ribbon through all of your working stitches. If you're using yarn, be careful not to catch your needle on the scrap yarn while knitting the next row. This way, if you do need to rip back, that scrap yarn goes through all of the stitches you would need to pick up at that designated point. It also means that you're not going to accidentally rip back past that point because it's caught those stitches. And that is it for tips and tricks. Now that you're equipped with some extra knowledge, you can dive on in to knitting yourself this free fall shawl pattern. 
It has been designed to work with two colors of fingering weight yarn, and for that Halloween look, I went with orange and black. But I am super keen to try it with like maybe a blue or a green for an all the time shawl. You can also try knitting it in a heavier weight yarn and just change between three colors or still use the two colors and hold them together, bumping up your needle size appropriately. It is yours to play with as you wish. You can find the link to download the free pattern in the description. And if you liked this video, please subscribe and hit the notification bell to join along with the rest of 13 projects of Halloween. I hope you have a lovely day and I will see you soon for project four. Bye!